good day friends i am indeed thankful to director sir and my good old friend dr riyom bats for giving this opportunity to share our thoughts on a subject very dear to us physics education uh, this talk i am giving on behalf of me and my friend dr sanjeev tiwari my personal experience is in learning at secondary college and at research levels are discussed with specific examples with a few specific examples the sequence appear to be a bit at random and not in any any real sequence but we may be pardoned for that much of my own concepts in physics got greatly cleared when i was asked to teach intermediate level physics to two biology students who detest mathematics and physics and they wanted to go for medical admission this was when i myself was studying in msc first and second years i really loved those two years while i was teaching them concepts of intermediate level physics got further improved when i taught my children 30 years later when they were studying in secondary standards the bottom line is teaching is one of the best ways of learning i hear quote another uh, uh, passage from mit massachusetts institute of technology usa where they themselves oriented their uh, beginner level uh, physics courses for phd students uh, just i'm quoting them the physics department has replaced the traditional large introductory lecture with smaller classes that emphasizes hands on interactive collaborating learning last autumn this was written in 2010 last autumn after years of experimentation and debate and resistance from students who initially petitioned against it the department made the change permanent uh, in these schools and this was subsequently followed in very other many other universities that's what it says in these school physicists have been pioneering new teaching methods drawn from research showing that most students learn fundamental concepts more successfully and are better able to apply them through interactive collaborative student centered learning so this is uh, uh, sort of my introductory remarks you can say and then as i go to the next slide uh, you see basically we have to what i what i am trying to emphasize is the questioning attitude has to be developed in the students when they are studying in the school and college because normally there is a tendency the most important aspect uh, is the questioning attitude question first yourself and if not satisfied ask the teacher basically the shy or the fear psychosis has to go away in all students at all levels it is there since from the primary level right up to the phd level when we attend lectures at the phd level then also we have this uh, shy psychosis and we don't want to expose our ignorance if you make it a point to ask questions in a class or a lecture you are sure to become automatically attentive in the class and mind will not be allowed to wander and like for example the questioning attitude to hear very very simple questions in fact much of these questions i have been trying to ask in the last couple of years only why there should be seven days in a week we know that uh, 365 days make a year and they have uh, definitely reason 24 hours make a day and uh, sort of 29 and a half to 30 days make a month these are very clearly understandable because there are geophysical or uh, planetary motions associated with them but why seven days in a week and why they are in a sequence and then uh, the most important thing is all civilizations across the world and across all times have followed the same sequence that is sunday monday tuesday etc sunday representing sun monday moon etc etc and uh, various planets why is it in the same sequence and why is it followed across all civilizations and for so many so many centuries why it has been like this this i am just telling one example there are several such examples why people why we have not asked these questions and uh, i in the recent past have been questioning various people 
and some of them i am not saying that nobody knows the answer but many of them don't but this is a very very straightforward daily question that should have come into our mind and then you have radio signals uh, why uh, for tv waves are not able to go through the ionosphere european weather predictions are very good but not of india uh, what is the purpose of prime numbers we have been wondering why should there be prime numbers and why are they given importance why there is symmetry in the universe of course these have been i mean not that it has been asked for the first time by me but these are very well known and so called every now and then we talk about play something happening and in fact even yesterday there was that the five planets are aligning mm -hmm. in the same line and some great thing is going to happen etc such things come often why should such thing happen and when will that happen if at all we have known in the history that there have been very accidental discoveries like for example apple falling on uh, newton's head and then he got the idea of gravity and then you have uh, benzene uh, the closed structure formation of benzene when uh, this uh, the german uh, physicist the german chemist he got the idea that is he got a dream saying that uh, the tail is being eaten by the head of the uh, serpent like that these are some of the things and of course we know about the very uh, famous case of uh, of archimedes when he started uh, from the bath tub running uh, without any clothes uh, calling eureka eureka because he got a spark at that time so it is not that it is a momentary spark that is the discovery but these people have been thinking 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 about this about some phenomena and then they, that is a spark that comes at that time so uh, so these are all biographies of these few physicists that we know but there are biographies of uh, i mean we need to read the biographies along with the scientific discoveries of them and then we will know how to think because basically we need to have the the concept of thinking has to be inculcated in science or for that matter in any subject so these all come if you read a lot of biographies of various uh, scientists and these are all uh, few few cases that we would have studied in our school college but it is very important that the teacher also inculcates this type of a thinking and also makes it a point that the student should read the biography before they start deriving the expressions the mathematical formulations so in fact uh, in music i know very well that in music uh, bsc uh, bachelor of uh, bachelors uh, in music or masters in music the biography of the composers is a very very important subject it, in fact there is a paper on that it's it's like history uh, it's like history history of music or something like that so history of science and history of the biography of the uh, the scientists is also very important and then what you will get an inquiry mind which will get sharpened well going to the next uh, slide as i said i am not following any particular sequence slightly it may look random here and there so here is one another example which should have come into which should be being inquired by people see why this fahrenheit is having the scale of minus 32 to 212 12 to 12 is being the boiling point and 32 being the uh, the freezing point. Why is just an odd scale that is existing? Many people uh, th these things are described in the book. I am not saying that they are not described. But today, if I ask something, I ask many questions at many many people at random, but they were not able to answer. So that means that it is it has not gone into the minds of people. Why such a odd scale has been chosen? and uh, as uh, as i earlier mentioned about this why seven days in a week and why are why they are in this particular sequence so i am not giving uh, trying to give an answer anywhere here i am just only trying to pose and why such questions have not arisen in the minds of people okay another another point that i want to mention here is the practicals that are conducted for the bsc and the msc students they are not taught they are not conducted after the theory has been taught 
because they say that no no but, 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 but all the practicals cannot be conducted after all theory has been uh, completed this type of thing is not possible so we tend to do some experiments which about which we simply don't know anything and such a thing is being taught so we simply assume something and uh, the demonstrator comes and uh, teaches uh, tells us tells us some uh, formula and then this is a method and then we complete the whole experiment without understanding anything and the theory associated with is coming somewhere late in the semester or the second semester and uh, these two have no connections so we have not been able to appreciate the experiment and try to understand that so the practical way would be the practical class should be held only after the teaching of theory that is how can it be achieved practical scheduling of first semester should be based on the last year's theory that has been taught to you and then the practical scheduling of second semester should contain uh, this year's first semester theory so that way many things can be uh, taken care of so here for example i am showing this example of a simple pendulum and then we say that no no the the, the angle of swing should be uh, theta should be small so that tan theta equal to uh, tan theta equal to theta that type of approximation can be this can be appreciated only after he has studied the theory so that theta should be small and then when they really do the experiment they can really see if they make a big swing what is the effect that makes in the uh time period of the pendulum so these are very important things and then of course another uh, example very simple two examples i have tried to go uh, to show here resonance of uh, sound waves the sonometer experiments etc so another very important thing that i have uh, i have felt very very odd was that english and some science terms that is in, in physics very often the dynamics and statics and then deviation these type of the english terms which have purely english meaning these are used and when i was studying in my higher secondary what was called pre university and then bsc i was thinking that dynamics is one subject uh, one discipline statics is one discipline but i never tried to look at them as sip mere english words it is an english word which has been borrowed for science in for studying a particular subject dynamics which is moving i know its meaning in everyday life but when it comes to physics i have never tri tried to look at it that it has to something to do with the moment i am studying it just there are some equations associated with this structure there is something associated with it so i have not tried to associate them that these are english mean english words having the same meaning in physics they are not different so similarly the prism experiment when we do the deviation of the uh, incident ray and then when it emerges out of the prism so these are very simple english words and at that time we knew so much english definitely so we would have only if would have told that these are simple english words but we are told as if they are great technical words and then we have to know the meaning of them so these are some things which i don't know this these are my experiences that i am trying to tell okay uh ah uh, yet another thing is a very simple thing see i was uh, i was just uh, we went to a place where yes simple Uh, introductory lecture of in plasma physics was to be given, and that person gave an example that if you heat ice that is a solid, it becomes liquid that is water, and then if you heat it further, it becomes steam that is gas. What happens if you heat it for further, further and further? That is what is plasma. He said. they break it up into the water molecules break it up into two and that becomes electrons and ions so that was such a simple concept i was previously thinking a uh, plasma is the fourth state of matter this is what we know but no, but did not know the further thing it's a such a simple concept of physics that heat 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 further and further they split similarly about the fundamental or ele elementary particles previously we were telling that only electrons and protons are the fundamental particles but now there are hundreds of uh, elementary particles why are they coming into picture although all of them may not be having 
a, a large lifetime but there are so many fundamental particles how how at uh, one particular time so much fundamental that fundamental cannot be changing how it is happening like this then that means that any particle if you bombard it with the higher energy previously the case of uh, plasma it was heat that we were supplying here we were, we are uh, supplying uh, giving energy bombarding it with heavier with uh, with particles of very high energy like for example the cern experiments so we are able to break into the uh, into the particle and split it further so that is how if you are able to make higher and higher energy uh, particles you may be able to break Uh, into further and further particles and further uh, they may be called elementary they may although they may be short living so you have to also have the concept of the lifetime associated with them <clears throat> and okay another thing is i just wanted to just touch on one or two uh, examples in which we have physics and uh, various other subjects uh, of science Uh, the inter interdisciplinary way of looking at things here, for example, electromagnetic waves in various uh, energy ranges and frequency ranges being used for various applications. This is for, say, for example, medical, and then for radio communications and for uh, many other applications uh, that we are using. So, interdisciplinary way in which it is used. Yet another example is, for example, uh, you may be all familiar with. Uh, the swing bowling swing bowling is very effective so particularly uh, in, in england the first part of the season that is during a may june etc when it is humid and also very cold the swing bowling is very effective so that has to do with the uh, when you hold the seam in a particular way seam is that where the stitching takes place and then the humid and damp atmosphere the the the, the ball can be made to swing so these are some examples in which physics is coming into picture and then but we have to use it we have to think it in the physics way to understand the phenomena so it is a very interesting subject that way that's what i'm trying to drive at and of course there is another question that uh, we often uh, ask in the interviews uh, how is it that satellites are moving constantly without any fuel how are they moving continuously so this is a question that people uh, tend to get confused and they say that no no there is a fuel there uh, which when it gets which when gets exhausted does the satellite fall down so this is a question that needs to be understood by people of course if you explain explain to uh, or if you ask them in a different way that if you have a string then then uh, rotate it around that that what, what happens so Uh, centripetal centrifugal acceleration being balanced by the gravity etc this everybody knows but to if you look at a particular uh, particular case then they may not be able to apply and here i lastly come to one uh, that is the atmospheric predictability my own subject where i i belong to the meteorological community atmospheric predictability because there is a and uh, there is a uh, there is a feeling that uh, the tropics that is in india and uh, these places the weather weather prediction is not good whereas in the european uh, places the weather prediction is good basically uh, the atmosphere uh, lorentz showed in 1963 atmosphere uh, is a non linear system that is the various uh, various parameters are linked in the in a non linear fashion with each other so uh, the non linearity grows very rapidly with time so with the result after a few uh, after a few days the predictability decreases and particularly so in tropics where the balancing force that is the basic driving force is the pressure gradient arising out of the heat gradient but in the tropics the balancing force that is the coriolis force is very small so the non linearity is much more in the tropics so the predictability in the tropics is very much less and here is where we come to uh, hear of this chaos theory and then the butterfly effect uh, butterfly effect and here i have shown linear versus non linear case where very small difference in the initial conditions they grow very rapidly 
uh, after a, after 10 15 steps whereas in the linear case it remains the same small difference will make very little no difference so this is called what is called the butterfly effect which i have probably that uh, slide has skipped so if we, uh, so to take uh, care of this to a, to a certain extent extent we try to do what is called ensemble forecasting where we try to make uh, little small differences in the initial state of the atmosphere by giving the random uh, errors, uh, introducing the random errors, and you have uh, over a period of time of integration of the phenomena, that is the atmospheric state, you get into a st st uh, state of forecast uncertainty that is achieved. And that is why uh, you are not able to give a very clear cut forecast, but only a range of forecasts. So, of course, we have we have recently seen the great predictions of uh, Einstein coming through, that is the uh, gravitational waves, detection of gravitational waves. And of course, in 1919 itself, his bending of light experiment, uh, the, the postulate was verified by Eddington. So, some of the discoveries have uh, taken time, but have, have been shown to be so well predicted well in advance and now of course we, you all know that the real challenge in physics lies in the unified theory to see the large scale and the small scale forces uh, being unified with a single uh, with a single theory so i just would like to conclude by saying that uh, thinking is the most important thing and whether the, the physics can contribute to some of the things that we see in daily life. I have been always perturbed by seeing that when I go in the, uh, to the airport and uh, sit in the aircraft, oh, these wide uh, wings are there, it might collide, collide with the other fellow. So what is the way, because we know that it is based on Bernoulli's principle, and so the wider the wings, the lift will be better, the, this we know, but how, uh, is it the only way that it can be done? Are there other ways the aircraft, uh, the wings can be reduced? And then drone experiments. Today drone has come, so many types of new experiments can be uh, thought of by us. And uh, one, one more example I have given is oxygen, how to go at higher, higher altitudes, you have to carry the oxygen cylinder, etc. But in rockets, we take the solids, solid propellants we take. So they are inflammable, etc. So whether we can do the, the mountaineering, whether we can uh, take uh, oxygen in some other way. And ultimately, of course, my own uh, concept of world is a world without army because the, each country is spending a lot of its G, uh, GDP in maintaining the army. They're spending a lot of money in the army and the armed forces to defend the frontiers. Only if we have some peace in the whole world, we can reduce this uh, expenditure and have a better life. So, additionally, uh, the new education policy has come about and uh, Dr. Kastur Rangan, who was formerly in ISRO, he has uh, chaired this and then this has come about. And a very important thing in this I have seen is in the BSc level, graduation level, you can take any combination subject. You don't have to go physics, chemistry, mathematics. This is a normal traditional thing. You can have, um, say, for example, physics and uh, history, physics and Sanskrit, and physics and uh, music. I would have liked to do a graduation again now, if given a chance, uh, physics and music. So what I conclude is there is little doubt that understanding physics is indeed a bliss. Thank you. Okay, thank you.